Hi, welcome to Papa's Workshop. Well, in today's video, it's all about inlays. I'm gonna be using the easel software and I'm gonna be using the inlay app to be able to do three different projects. Now, these three projects are completely different from each other. And I'm also gonna put a link in the Inventables project page so that you can download these and be able to use them in your shop. So let's get started. I'm gonna start off this project with a brand new file opened up in Easel. And the first thing I'm gonna do is go ahead and get the material size set. Now what I'm gonna use is a cedar fin slat. And this particular one that I have is 11.625 inches long and it is six inches wide. The depth or the thickness of this really doesn't matter because I'm not gonna be cutting all the way through this one. So that is now set. And the next thing I want to do is come over here to the Pro Design Library. I want to look for a Santa sled. So I'm just going to type in Christmas and let's just pull up all of the different Christmas clip art that is available in the Pro Design Library. And well, right off the whole first line is a great looking Santa sled. So I'm going to use that one right there. So that is going to be my sled that I'm going to use. Now, next, let's go find a reindeer. As I'm scrolling through the Christmas clip art for a reindeer, there are just hundreds of different designs that you can choose from to create your design. But, oh, there's my reindeer. I like that one right there. So I'm going to highlight this one. I'm going to go ahead and bring this in as a fill. So now I have my two items. So the next thing we're going to do is resize these. I'm going to resize this one also. And I want to be able to put it right about here. I want to rotate the sled. Because sand is going to be flying off. And let's make it a little bit bigger. Same thing with the reindeer. We'll make this reindeer a little bit bigger also. And I think that looks pretty good. I think we need to rotate this just a little bit. But that's the look that I'm, I want to be able to have. Now we're gonna add some text in this. Now, what I want to do is use this portion right here for my inlays. And I'm gonna use this where the sled and the reindeer stick above the surface. So I need a pocket for it to sit in, but this will allow me to have the exact position that I want and it will allow me to be able to uh, paint everything ahead of time and be able to drop it in. Now, if you look at this over here, it's not really showing up that well. So what I can do is just simply change the bit down to a 16th of an inch bit, and let's see what that does. Now, that gives me everything that I want. So that actually looks good. Now, I don't need to cut it this deep. This is cutting actually at 0.2. Really don't need this. All I really need to be able to do is have this cut at about 0.1 and that's gonna be plenty deep enough. Now, the next thing, let's grab some text. And I wanna be able to come down and look at the different text. One of the text that I like is this one right here. So I'm gonna come right up to this point and we're gonna put in this house. And I'm gonna slide this down. I think that's gonna look pretty good. And then I'm gonna do the same text again. And I'm gonna put, slide this over. I'm gonna have it in this area. And we're gonna back this up and put the leaves. There we go. Now, let's resize this. We can get this a little bit bigger. I think that looks pretty good. That looks good right there. So there's my sign, already done. Now I wanna be able to have this on two different work pieces because I'm gonna use the V bit to be able to engrave this portion. And then I'm gonna use the 16th of an inch bit to be able to do the pocket and the inlays. So right down here, 
I can use this little drop down window and duplicate it. And I'm going to duplicate it actually twice, and I'm going to tell you why in just a second. Because the first thing I want to be able to do is take these two pieces and I'm going to delete this out. This will ensure that my spacing on the letters remains the same. As far as the bit, let's go over here. We'll change this to a 60 degree V bit and that looks nice. So this page is finished. So let's go back over now to this one. This time I can eliminate this portion and I want to work on the pocket. So if I click on these two, if I click the first one, hold the shift down, click the second one, and let's go to the apps. We'll go to the inlay app. I don't want to use the eighth inch bit. I want to be able to use that sixteenth of an inch bit. So that is 0 0.0625. The tolerance on 0.003. I'm going to leave that alone and we'll import that in. But now at this point, that actually sits directly on top of the original piece. So I want to go ahead and split this out so I can work with these two on the top and I want to be able to work with these two down here on the bottom. Now as far as the positioning, I got to get rid of the ones underneath. So I'm going to slide this out of the way for the moment and I'm going to take these two pieces and I'm going to cut them. We'll eliminate them and now I'll bring this section back over. So where does this need to go? Well, I have the exact coordinates and all I need to do is just type those in and it was 5.196 and 2.997. And that positions it exactly back where the original one was that I just deleted. So now that portion is done. But again, let's go ahead and make this pocket not as deep. I can reduce this down. Don't need it at 0.3. We'll make this at 0.1 and that takes care of it. So this particular portion is done as well. What's next? We've got to work with these two pieces. So all I need to be able to do is get rid of the tabs. We'll go ahead and do that right now. Now I'm going to go ahead and take this now and put this on a brand new work piece. And I'm going to use the Exploder app and separate these. Because right now if I click on one, it highlights both. All I need to do is just be able to use the Exploder app, separate these two, and put them on a separate work piece. So after separating them, I just went ahead and grouped them so it uses the minimum amount of space. Now rather than use a half inch piece of plywood, I want to go ahead and use a quarter inch piece of plywood for this to be able to cut these out. So that is going to be taken care of there. I'll verify that this now is down at a quarter of an inch and it is and no tabs are being used. So now all I need is a piece of wood that is basically five by five and I can cut out the inlays and get these painted ahead of time. So to recap now what I have, I want to look at the individual work pieces. This is the first one and this has everything on the sign so you can get the complete layout. Now this of course is showing the 16th of an inch bit. So this letter is not V carved at this point, but this gives the position. So from there we move to the next work piece and this is where my pocket will be cut out. And you can see that that looks actually quite nice. That creates the pocket that I want and that's with the 16th of an inch bit. My actual pieces that will go into the inlay are going to be on another work piece and here they are ready to be able to cut out. And then the last work piece that I'm going to do is the actual letters and of course I have the 60 degree V bit in position to be able to engrave this and that's going to look really nice. So that's my whole sign. I'm taking the first uh, work piece and I'm carving the letters and again this is a 60 degree V bit on a cedar fence post. Probably one of the worst materials that you can use, but the end result looks really nice. 
Now I'll reset the machine up and I'm using the last XY0 position and now I have that sixteenth of an inch bit in to be able to carve out the pocket for the sled and for the reindeer. I kicked this up to a speed of 72 inches per minute and quite frankly I probably could have gone higher. The end result on this scrap wood piece of cedar fence board I think it actually looks pretty good. Again if I was using nice material it would be even better. Now for the reindeer and the sled itself I ended up selecting a piece of MDF. Again probably the worst piece of material in the shop but I wanted to see if it would work. Now I'm using the glue and the tape method to be able to hold this down and this is the Starbond CA glue and don't forget I got a 15% discount for you down in the description below. So now I'm cutting this out. I do have the dust boot on to be able to keep the dust down and there it is. My Santa and my sled are all done and they just slip out and yeah there's a lot of dust there that uh, still is in this MDF. Now this does require a little bit of sanding to be able to get it cleaned up and ready to be able to put into the pocket for this little inlay. Now I want to do the first test fit and using the MDF type material it is not the best. Now remember I used 0 .003 of the uh, tolerance on this and it's tight. Now if I was using uh, a hardwood this would probably work but if I had to do this again I would probably increase that tolerance to about 0 .005 but this does fit it's just very tight. I went ahead and just used the spray can paint and sprayed the letters with the gloss red and once that's dried I can just sand that off and the letters themselves then will be done and this is a very easy process to be able to do uh, with this type of lettering. Now most people will overspray this and they put way too much paint in and you get a lot of bleeding into the wood itself. You don't need to do that. It only takes a very little paint, very lightly sprayed, and it works fine. And then when it's dry, you sand it off and the results are really, really nice. Now one thing I like to do is just take the air hose and blow out all the dust. To me that works better than using a vacuum because that removes all the dust down into the uh, letters and then you can actually see how it's going to look. Now I'm going to lightly press in the uh, sled and the reindeer and just to get an idea of what it's going to look like. That turned out nice. Now I'm going to go ahead and glue those pieces in and I'm going to clamp them in because remember I said this is a tight fit. If I had to do it over again I would increase the tolerance from the 0.003 to about 0 0.004 or 0 0.005. But the clamping did very well and I'll let this set up for about a half hour and let that glue set and then I'll be able to take it out of the clamps. And I think you can agree that these results look fantastic. So let's move to the next project. Now last year I did this sign right here. <laughs> I did a little bit on the hard way. All I did was just took my fence board and cut it to length. Then I just cut out the three letters and had to take the old tape measure and align each letter and get it exactly where it needed to be. And that was a lot of trouble. In this project today, I'm actually doing a very similar sign, but I want to create the pocket for each of these letters. So that way on the computer, it's aligned perfectly and I can create the pocket. Then using the inlay app, I'll go ahead and cut these letters out separately, paint everything, and then these letters, as well as these strips, will just drop into place and there's no tape measure required. The alignment's going to be perfect and a whole lot easier. Now to begin working on this one, this sign is going to be 6 inches wide and it's going to be 33 inches long. So I'm going to go ahead and type that in right now. And that's going to create a tiling situation and that's okay. I'm going to show you exactly how to do that. 
So now let's go ahead and get the letters and that little strip in at the top and the bottom. So with the letters, just typed in in position where I want them, and I went ahead and put this strip in. Now this strip is one inch wide, and of course it's the six inches across. I brought it down three inches from the top, same thing at the bottom. From three inches from the bottom up is where that strip is going to be. And then these letters, I just positioned in exactly where I want them. Over here on the um, display side, I want to be able to show you just how that looks with the white background and the red letters. That's gonna look real good. Now it doesn't show the 3D portion. Easel doesn't have that capability, but you can get the idea. And I don't have the ability to do the two colors because I think these stripes need to be green. I wanna work with each of these letters individually. So I'm gonna highlight the J and come over to my app and select the inlay generator. And at this point, it's going to select it. I do have an eighth inch bit and that's gonna work just fine. So I'm gonna go ahead and import that into my um, workpiece and slide this up. Now at this point, I can take my pocket and slide it over into position. Now, I have to get this one out of the way, of course, and then I'm gonna highlight this and position it exactly where it needs to be. Now I have the actual coordinates and I know that this is 3.2 inches and that centers it exactly where it needs to be. Then I'll do the same thing with this one. I'm going to go ahead and go over here now with this highlighted and select my inlay. There's my two components. Bring that one in and don't want to do that. I'm going to come back up here, add to my edit menu, and unmove. That did not do. Unsize it. Now I am back to the original. So let's bring this up to where it needs to be. And I'll highlight just this one. And you can see I can separate that out. Over here, again, I know exactly these coordinates. So I'm gonna slide this out of the way. And with this one highlighted, I can just literally type in the coordinates and it will move it directly into position. And it's just that simple. Now we'll do the same exact thing with this Y. Back over to my apps, select the generator for the inlays. There it is, import it and we'll bring that up and we're gonna do the exact same thing again. We'll take that, slide it out of the way. We'll take my pocket and I will just type in my 3.1, uh, th I'll type in my 3.2 and I'll bring this down to 7.991 and that is now done. That's how easy it is to be able to position this where these are actually perfectly straight up and down and I have it centered exactly where I want it. Now these three letters right here will go over to another workpiece and I'll group those together and you can see how I did that down here. So again, this takes a very small piece of wood and this is 10 by 10 and I'll be able to cut those out. So now let's go ahead and clean this up. I don't need these letters anymore, so I'll just cut those. And I've already moved these letters to a new workpiece, so I'm going to cut that. Now I have the basic sign left, and I need to be able to set this up for tiling. This dark blue line right here shows where it's gonna be tiled. And if I come over and look at this menu, you can see that it's set up for the 1717 for the two different tiles, and the total length is the 33 inches. Well, I don't really want to have the break right here in the middle between this letter. I would rather have it up here, or quite frankly, down here, either way. So basically, one of the little hacks that you can do is a little workaround that is fantastic. 
I can change the length of this sign from 33 and I can make that 40. What does that do? That now moves this line up to this point and there's nothing being carved at this position. So my first tile is going to be cut from this point right here and cut the pocket for this. It'll cut out the Y and the O and there's my stopping point. From there, I'll slide this workpiece down to this 20 and it'll cut out the J and it'll cut out this next pocket for this. And you can see that right over here. You can see exactly how it's going to be cut. So right now it's showing this one at the 20 inches and then by highlighting this, now you can see where it'll come down and it will cut out the next section. And that's what I want. And actually, this has the overlap. So I'm going to turn off the overlap. I don't need it because there's nothing that's going to be carved in there. So now you see where the tile one cuts right as it should. And then when I select tile number two, it's going to cut just the J and this portion. And that will be it. So I like that ability to be able to, you know, cheat the system, if you will, and be able to get this break in between where there's nothing actually carving. So now that is set. This is ready to be able to take over to the machine. And just to recap, now this is the whole project. And then from here, I'm going to go over. This is where the letter cutout is going to be. And then from here, this is going to be how my pocket is going to be cut. Now, I really don't need these cut this deep because it's actually cutting this down to 0.3. That's way too deep. I'm going to change this to 0.1. Plenty deep. So there it is. That's ready to be able to uh, cut out. Now I'm using the 8th inch down cut bit to be able to carve this and I'm using the plywood. And I think you can see a huge difference between this material and using the MDF that I use for the sled and the reindeer. Now those cut out very easily and I wanted to be able to sand the fence board first before putting that onto the CNC machine to cut out the pockets. I went ahead and hit simulate just to see exactly what is going to carve. And you can see it's going to carve right up to this blue line. That's the work area that it's going to be carving in. And that confirms it over here. So I'm going to go ahead and get this carved and then we'll move it to the next section and get the J and that last little bar uh, cut out. Now this is the setup that I have. These two bump stops are the ones that are actually clamping and holding the material down. This one, as well as this one, is my guide that I will slide the board on. And this last one down here is just giving me the reference point for my zero, for the XY zero position. So it's a very simple setup, and that should work real well to be able to carve out this portion of the sign. Now you're going to see this screen when you're doing tiling, and this tells you exactly where you need to be. And in my case, it says zero inches. You're carving a tile, double check that you've moved the entire piece down to zero. And that's what we have set right there. And that is confirmed and we'll continue with the checklist. Okay, we're doing the first tile now. The pocket is done for the little bar, the Y is finished, and we're working on the O. And this does not take long. And remember, we're only cutting down 0.1 of an inch. First section is done now, so I'm going to go ahead and slide this down and set it up for the second tile. And I have to slide it down to the 20 inch point. So now we'll come right over here to this section and we're going to hit number two. And that shows this section right there. You can again see the blue line. So now let's go ahead and hit carve. Now it's saying you are carving a tile, double check that you have moved your entire project down to the 20 inches. So that's what I need to move. I need to move this down 20 inches 
and let me close this for a second and you can see the 20 inches right there. So let's go ahead and do that and then we'll be able to continue the carve. Okay, so now I have everything repositioned with the two clamps on this side and just went ahead and secured one up here on this end too because my three inch strip will be coming right through here and then the J is gonna be right into this area. My pencil line right here is on the 20 inch line and that is right even with the bottom of this bump stop and that's my reference point for my XY0 position. So now let's go ahead and go through the checklist and carve this second tile. This is just like a brand new project with my pencil point on my XY0 and it carves perfectly. Now to be able to test the fit on these and this O just comes right up there, snaps in perfect. That is what I want to be able to see. Same thing for the J. Oh yeah, that is just awesome. Nice tight fit. So the 0 .004 of a tolerance worked real well on this. And then the Y, just right. Now these strips I actually cut out on the table saw and they snap in. And there you have it. Now I'm gonna go ahead and paint this one off camera, but you can see there was no alignment issues. They just dropped into the pocket and that's perfect. So there you have three projects that you can do very easily that makes perfect timing for the Christmas that's just around the corner. I wish I had done this last year. It would have made my job so much easier. Here's another project that's easy to be done with the Inlay app, and that's puzzles. And you can do names, you can do animal shapes, just about anything that you wish. Now the nice thing about this using the Inlay app, it's exactly the same. The only difference that you need to do is just increase the tolerance. Instead of using a 0 .004 or 0 .005, I would increase the tolerance to about 0 0.01 and it will require a little bit of experimentation on your part, but this is an excellent gift for Christmas that's just around the corner. So you keep that in mind also. Well, there you have three great projects that you can do to get your Christmas season started off right. Now, if you'd like to see more inlay videos, please leave me a comment down below and tell me what type of inlay project that you would like to see. Now keep in mind that Easel does not support the V bits with the inlay, so I cannot do those using Easel. But in upcoming videos, I promise you, I will get involved with doing the inlays using the V bits. But for now, leave me a comment down below if you'd like to see more videos like this on using the Easel inlay app and being able to do different types of projects. I also want to thank my Patreons for supporting this channel. Their support is invaluable for me to be able to continue to create videos such as this. So again, I want to thank everyone for watching today, and I look forward to seeing you very soon on the next project. Hey, wait, where'd the camera come from? I said I was going to paint these letters off camera. And now you get to see me spray paint the word joy in the bright red, and I even got the green. And no, it's not bleeding over. I'm not getting green on the word joy. But let's go ahead and get the white since you're seeing me paint this. So let me go ahead and paint the white uh, board for the background also. I hope you enjoyed this video. And if you did, please give me a thumbs up. And don't forget to subscribe to the channel and hit the little bell notification next to it. I would really appreciate it. These videos are a lot of fun to be able to do.